Welcome to the Three Gig Sports Podcast, where we are never wrong, but sometimes misinformed. This is Danny G sitting alongside Jimmer today. Rio is still homesick. We've got a lot of games to cover from over the weekend, a lot of great games in college and in the NFL. Interesting Monday night football game, too. Um, we'll get to all that here in a little bit. Let's kick it off with some news and notes, Jimmer. Is Rio even alive? Have you seen him? Heard from him? Bro, I I don't know. He uh, he could be dead. Let's hope not. We don't need to get a paste over for the three on the gig, do we? I don't know. Yeah, you know what? We might need a cutout, at least a cardboard cutout or something. For two? Yeah. Go back, in, go back in time a little bit. Two jig. Yeah. Two gig. All right. We're going to kick her off. Uh, UFC star John Jones arrested on misdemeanor domestic violence charge and injuring or tampering with a vehicle, a felony in Las Vegas. Now, this was done hours after one of his legendary fights. I do believe it was with Alexander Gustafson was entered into the UFC Hall of Fame. Yeah, that sucks, Thoughts? man. I, I don't know what happened. I don't know enough about it, but it just... He can't keep himself out of trouble for more than, what, a year? Oh, Dana, you know? Dana White even came out and said that. He's like, I'm not shocked by anything that ever comes out with him. He's like, just not if, when. Yeah. Just too bad. And it always gets in the way because he's arguably the best UFC fighter of all time. So, I don't know. Yeah, I was like, good God, man. <laughs> yeah, and it's funny that uh, he was just talking shit about Dylan Dennis. Getting arrested too. I don't know if you saw that, but he got hauled out of a bar by a bouncer and he got arrested. And Jones commented, talking smack, and then he gets arrested days later. It's yeah. it's not a good look, man. You're you're trying to make a push for that heavyweight mm. match. It's like, bro, I, I don't know. But I guess if you're at the top at that level, like most of those guys have to be kind of crazy and do dumb shit, right? I I don't know. I don't know, know about domestic though. Yeah, that's, that's kind of where yeah. that's kind of where we kind of put a little bit of a, a no. Fuck no. We'll be, yeah. That's the reason why you're supposed to go in the ring and beat somebody else up. Yeah, I'm curious what they meant by tampering with the vehicle, too. Like, we need to cut the brakes? Yeah. Like, what, is that, yeah. what does that mean? It's got to be, right? Damn. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be something fucking freaky. Like, that took some lug nuts off the tire? Right. Jesus. Uh, Christian McCaffrey leaves in the second quarter with a hamstring injury, and J.C. Horn breaks his foot in a Panthers win on Thursday Night Football. CMC possibly out six weeks. And Horner has been, or Horn has been placed on injured reserve. Yeah. How do you feel about CMC going out? Fuck off. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> Whoa. So, so we'll go ahead and make it loud and clear. I lost to uh, the little half foot bandito, Rio, this weekend. Um, I don't know what I ended up losing by. Did I lose by 10? Yeah, something like something that. Something like that. Um, I don't know. Do you believe Christian McCaffrey would have got another 10 fucking points? Yeah. No, I got hosed. But it's all right. Nah, everyone has to deal with injuries. One game, yeah. Yeah, one game. We'll go ahead and got to regroup, make sure we get some boys in there. But uh, it hurts them, though, tremendously. Uh, you lose your number one corner draft, uh, high uh, draft pick that's been balling out this year, Christian McCaffrey, kind of doing Christian McCaffrey things of late with his injury stuff. Well, the thing is, the team talked about they wanted to limit his touches and things like that. In the first two weeks, first two weeks excuse me he still had i think 58 touches like that's not much of a limit like you know what i mean mm -hmm. I, I think with a guy like that it's hard to truly limit but i don't know you keep seeing him get hurt at some point you have to just put your foot down and be like listen here's the plan you know each week we go up by 10 percent or something yeah you're, you're, like, he's too small we're yeah. gonna have to go ahead and we if you if your offense depends that much on a running back go get another one too mm-hmm Maybe, Chubba look good. Maybe, uh -huh. maybe, maybe Chubba will be that guy. Mm -hmm. And I think that's maybe, I mean, that what they drafted him for and everything like that. But I, I mean, like we'll see. But they should have kind of sprinkled him in the mix before this more. Yeah. You know, just like you said, 58 touches or whatever. Should have sprinkled him in more. Man, but Hey, Darnold look good. Darnold so does. Call that out real quick. He does. Yeah. Uh, God, what it looks like when. When you don't play for the Jets, yes. Oh my God! I, I told we were big fans of him. Yep. Well, both I know both me and you were saying, God, if 
if Minnesota could figure out a package to bring him in, he's young. Yep. If a future, a quarterback of the future, I mean, he looks the part. It's when you have a dysfunctional fucking franchise like that, you can take anybody down, no matter what your talent is. Yeah. You know? Um, Kyrie Irving has not been vaccinated, which as of right now, uh, he would not be able to play any home games in Brooklyn due to their state mandate. Uh, same with Andrew Wiggins for Golden State Warriors, who lost a medical exemption case where he was trying to get a medical exemption for uh, from getting the vaccine. He said personal. When asked about it, he said uh, it's personal reasons, which is he's 100 percent correct, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, I don't disagree. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens with Kyrie. He I I think you got to trade him if he's going to play for half the games in for Wiggins, for that matter. You probably got to bring in a piece that's going to give you some playing time. Um, well, who who's going to want either one of them? Because it's California and New York. How many how many California teams are there? Fucking six in the NBA. So mm-hmm. you're in California a lot. New York has what? They have two. New Jersey three. Yeah, or, I mean, sorry, no, it's just two. It's New Jersey is the Brooklyn. It depends on the state requirements, right? So, like, mm-hmm. I feel like Texas and Florida are probably more lenient. So, like, you could talk about a Houston, a Dallas, uh, mm-hmm. Miami. He'd have to take a pay cut, something though, like right? that. There's no way you pay him the same amount of money for half the, for even three quarters of the games. Because, like I just said, you still have to go have on travel. the road. Yeah. You still have to go to California for. That's true. I think there's, yeah. I think there's what four or five teams in the NBA in California. Yeah. No, you. you it's a good point. Kevin Durant was pissed too. His interview, he was not happy with Kyrie <laughs> about that. So, uh, we'll leave personal opinion out of this part. <laughs> uh, Tyron Woodley gets a "I love Jake Paul" tattoo on his middle finger. <laughs> Man of his word. Hey, he got it done. Uh, I'm glad it wasn't something weird like on his lower back or something. You know, uh, middle finger's Did, not hold bad. On. Did anybody check his lower back? Ooh, touche. Like we don't know if it got done. You know? Yeah. Here's the deal. He's butthurt. He had to get the tattoo to fight him again. You didn't beat him the first time, Tyron. Like, let's let's be straight. You could have beat the shit out of him. And oh, you didn't easily. You to back, get that there, money. There, there's so. some, yeah, there was something else in the fucking works mm-hmm. there. You you hate you. You stunned him, and you could have in any fighter. I don't know how you, uh, especially one that's been going for so long, how you were able to hold back enough to not kill him. Yep. When you did, because, I mean, there was a, I'm like, all right, uh, how come you're not finishing him off? Yeah, when he had him against the ropes, he yeah. had him good there, and then he backed off. Yeah. Uh, Justin Tucker hits an NFL record 66-yard field goal as time expires to eke past the Lions. Let's go, Justin Tucker. So I asked you a question off the air. Is Justin Tucker the GOAT kicker? Justin Tucker is, in fact, the GOAT of kickers in NFL history. What was the number I gave you? 90.74% uh, field goal accuracy, the highest in NFL history. Yeah. Longest field goal now is owned by him. 16 for 16 in clutch time <laughs> in his career. Uh, also has a Super Bowl, too, I do believe. so. No big deal. Um, But better than Adam Vinatieri? Yeah. As a GOAT? Yeah. I'll put him there. Vinatieri's got a little more longevity, right? Like, he, he was around... For 40 Longer. years? Yeah. yeah. He, <laughs> I think that's where Tom Brady got his uh, idea to right. stick around forever. He's like, hold on, I got to beat out this kicker. But yeah, my my stat of the day for the Justin Tucker field goal, and we'll touch on the game in a little bit, but Justin Tucker's field goal covered more ground than the Bears' offense this weekend. How <laughs> insane is that? That's awesome. <laughs> I hope they keep rocking out like that. You know what? Sign... Matt Nagy to a 10 year contract right now, please bears. Yep. Lifetime. For, yeah. Like, yeah. Just lifetime. It's kind of do the Kirk Ferentz thing where we, where you just keep signing a guy that hell yeah. Uh, Alexander Volkanovsky, uh, unanimous decision, Valentina Shevenko, TKO and Curtis blades, unanimous decision, all win at UFC two sixty six. Robbie Lawler defeated Nick Diaz via TKO in the third round. Yeah, there were some good fights. Obviously, the big one we got to talk about is Robbie Lawler beating up Diaz. Um, I, I mean, it was, was going to happen. 
the ring rust is a real thing. Mm-hmm. It, it just is. He, Diaz is a stud, but it's tough when you're not in there with guys on the regular to fight somebody at Lawler's level. Lawler's no joke. Yeah, that's the that's the. How in the hell did his camp get talked into? This is the dude you're gonna face right out of the gate after six years off. Yeah. Yep. Like who the hell? Like, how about we have a little tune up before we? You know exactly. Give me, give me cowboy. He seems to be the tune-up. Yeah, he's I kind love of that, cowboy. Yeah, Don't get me wrong. Love he's the guy. Just, but, yeah, but he, he and he, but he's tune-up. willing to do it too. Exactly. He's U, he's UFC through and through. Dana, I will do whatever you want, baby boy. Yeah, I'll fight every month the yeah. entire year. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Two week camp. Well, I was to say whether it's a guy trying to make his way up the UFC or a guy that needs a tune-up before he goes up, like after he's been on a six-year hiatus. Um. I do believe Nick Diaz and uh, Robbie Lawler were piss pounding each other in the second round, though. Yeah. So he made it interesting for a little bit, but uh, Volkanovski, fucking animal. <laughs> He's a stud, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, he got touched too, though. I seen the, I seen the after, you know, the after photos of his face. So it wasn't like he didn't get touched up in there, but. No, he's a stud, and Shevchenko is, if it wasn't for Amanda Nunez, she could go down as one of the goats. Yeah. So I think we're getting That's... closer to closer, or closer and closer to Nunez, Shevchenko 3, which would be a fucking awesome fight. Those two are dogs, man. Oh, man. That would have to be the headline then. I'd, I, 100%. I, I, I would definitely get it. Yep. Oh, my God. Yep. Um, Michael Porter Jr. signs... A league max five year, two hundred and seven million dollar deal with the Nuggets. Go ahead and give us a crash course and your thoughts on this one. Yeah, so there's a lot to break down uh, about this. So this is your nineteen point two points, roughly seven eight rebounds a game guy, max contract. Okay, you can argue you're shooting for the future. Jimmer and I talked about that a little bit ago, and that, and that's a fair argument. But here's a deal: you've got Jokic. Murray, and now Porter, three players with max deals on the Denver Nuggets. And how far do you see them going in the playoffs, Jimmer? Maybe the Western Conference Finals. Maybe. And we're talking, so I think the, I do believe the Lakers, barring health and, you know, no broken hips from their AARP, um, are going to be one of the favorites. And you're also assuming that the Suns aren't going to dip down from last year too so you're competing for the western conference championship game maybe at at best there yeah, i don't th- i don't think i just don't see them making it to the finals and even if they do it's just i don't know i still well, think dallas it, could beat them you yeah, know oh yeah playoffs. like yep, I, yep. I don't know and, um, and i guess don't forget aaron gordon 80 million dollars i was gonna tell you you're gonna bring up the aaron gordon one too i'm like where the hell did, are they printing money <laughs> yeah yeah, they're taking advice from our federal government. They're just like, here, let's just chuck this out there. Is yeah. it real? You don't. It, yeah, yeah, it's real. Yeah, it, it, it's spendable somewhere, and it's backed up by something. Yeah. Uh, that being said, um, Andy Reid was taken to the hospital after Sunday's loss to the Chargers with dehydration, and but has now been released. I'm not going to lie. And the first thing I thought when they said, because it didn't say what he went there for. One fat guy to another. I thought they said, I thought it was going to be heart attack. Yeah. I, I think everybody did. right? Oh yeah. Cause yeah. like he, have you seen what the, his, that man's favorite meal? Like a I, huge I ass. I assume hot dogs. I don't, I no. honestly don't know. <laughs> the hell would you get hot dogs at? The first thing that would have crossed my mind is technically the right one. And that is a big old, Big old cheeseburger. That's technically the right one. Why wouldn't it be? Is it when you when you think chunky butt, don't you think cheeseburger? What what is the food yeah. that you think of when you think yeah. besides cake? And I hate cake, by the way. Let's make that very clear. I'm not big on cake either. Yeah. So okay, what's what, so what's the first fat food you think of? But you, I, I'm not saying burgers isn't up there. No, yeah, it's yeah, going sure. to be number one. You yeah. just don't want to give it. <laughs> think about it for a second. When you when you wake up all hungover in the morning. Or afternoon because stayed up all night. What's the food you think you get? What what ninety percent of the time? What do you go get? You know what it is. It's not burgers. What pizza? Yeah, you, that's exactly no. what it is. You walked into the wrong answer no. there, Jimmy. That's no. a bad no, argument. Pe- no pizza is while you're drunk, while you're at the end of the night. I'm talking about when you're hungover, 
or you wake up from from drinking all night. Yeah. You're going to grab a big old fat juicy burger because you need that grease in the bottom of the gut to soak up that fucking booze. Yeah. yeah. That's it's yeah, it's a good call. Uh, I just picture him shoveling hot dogs with just in his <laughs> what mouth is what, is what was happening. <laughs> what? You know? Just rain and wieners. Just rain. Just rain and wieners. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, hopefully he's okay. I thought he had a heart attack after that game because Mahomes didn't look good. The Chiefs just didn't look good. So He's fucking almost sent us all into it. I've never, I don't know if we've ever seen Mahomes throw two interceptions in a game. So we're like, <gasps> yeah. Uh, Josh Gordon signs with the Chiefs after being reinstated and is eligible to play as early as week four. We'll see if it makes a difference. Uh, I don't. The last time we saw him play, he didn't look like his old self, um, so I don't imagine he's gotten much better. Maybe the Chiefs will open something up and it, it'll help. But oh, he had to have done. He had, for this to be successful. He better have gotten in way better shape than what he was with the Seahawks. Hopefully. He looked like a tight end. Yeah, he's thick. He thick. He thick. Baby, baby got back. Yeah. That being said, <laughs> we looked this up off air, and I thought that they weren't testing for marijuana at all. That's not true. So they don't test between certain dates for THC. And that's like, what was it, April 20th through August 9th? Is that what it was? Yeah. So, uh, that's that's what his only battle is going to be. Because, I mean, the more he gets on the field, the more athletic he'll end up getting. He'll start uh, getting in more physical football shape. And he's still going to be an animal. He's still one of my favorite players to watch when he would. God. I still remember I went down to your house in Des Moines. And uh, I grabbed him. And it was, I can't remember what year off the top of my head, but he had a two game suspension to start the season. And the third game, I was like, well, I'm going to wait until I see how he does uh, before I throw him in my starting lineup. Can't remember who I put in there. It doesn't matter because I'm going to go ahead and let you know that the man did not miss a beat. I do believe he dropped like 25 to 30 fantasy points right out of the gate. I don't doubt the man, except for when a fat sack of weed is around. That's the only time I doubt him. And his ability not to smoke it or eat it. Yeah, I I was talking to a buddy of mine who's a huge Chiefs fan, and I'm like, how do you feel about it? I said, it depends on how he looks, in my opinion. And he said, you know, there's only upside for the Chiefs. Worst case, he doesn't look good, we cut him. Like what? You know, he's not getting paid a shitload of money. Mm No. It's uh, there's only upside, and I said, you know, that's that's a good point. Yep. Um, so we'll see. I hope he does well, man. He, you're right. He was really fun to watch in his prime. Um, I think we're far past that, though. Yep. Uh, sources say the UFC is finalizing Greg Hardy versus Alexei Alinek for UFC 270 on January 22nd. So going from my one. Um, domestic to another guy that went ahead and God, Greg Hardy just wouldn't have been such a fucking piece of shit human being. Yep. He actually looks decent in a ring or in an octagon. I yeah, I mean he decent, decent is true. Um, I think he's gonna get worked up by Alexi. Olenek is he's a stud, so this is definitely his biggest test. So mm. we'll find out. I know during one of the – when the UFC had one of the uh, pay-per-views during COVID, so when they were on Fight Island and Hardy fought, um, one of the things he said after the fight that he, that he won was he made an adjustment because he was listening to the announcers. Yeah. Um, so definitely a smart move. I mean, so it sounds like he's, you know, in that moment taking advice or taking – you know, he's He's learning. trying to learn and mm-hmm. – yep. Well, hopefully you learn from being a piece of shit human being. Yeah. So yep. agreed. Uh, Eli flips off America comically on Monday Night Football Manning cast. Yeah, pretty funny. What was uh, what was the context to it? So Eli was explaining how terrible Philly fans were to him, um, and he said when whenever he traveled to Philly, he'd be people be cussing at him, throwing stuff at him. He'd be getting the bird, double birds from like I think eight year old kids. 
And so he threw that up to as an example, which I'm sure the producers aren't going to love that move, but hilarious. And uh, Philly fans, Jimmer? Worst fans in the NFL. That is correct. From when they're from Philadelphia, Philadelphia area. Scattered throughout the United States. We know some, but they're good people, but not not in the city of Philadelphia. Not traveling there at all. Um, did you... Were you surprised that he maybe he Eli Manning of all people could be getting a SEC fine? Uh, it's kind of funny. <laughs> it is kind of funny. Eli Manning, who I thought had no personality his whole fucking career. Yeah. No, I mean I could see him getting it before Peyton. So I mean, if there's uh, anything there, but yeah, he might get a fine. Pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, LeBron was offered NFL contracts in 2011 by not only the Cowboys but also the Seahawks. Damn. Like, we've talked about this a lot, and I think a lot of people have. He could have played it. Imagine him at tight end. Imagine. I just, would I rather have seen him in football or where he's at now? Probably basketball still. But, God, that would have been so. A Megatron as a tight end. Fuck. Where are you going? What do you mean tight end? Dude could have played wide receiver. Everyone just goes by the size. Like, that dude is fast as shit. He can still wide receive. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter yeah, where he plays, yeah. right? Nobody's going to be yep. able to guard him. Uh, Luke was talking shit, by the way, about this. He's like, <laughs> I'm oh, like, oh, he's boy. like, he would have, he just would have got, what did what he say? His ass will be, whatever. I'm like, dude is six foot eight, 250 pounds. Who's whooping that ass? Right. Nobody. Football, there's not going to be no flopping. Yep. Okay. There's, I was like, yeah, Luke, take off your LeBron hating hat for two seconds. Yeah, uh, Megatron was is one of the greatest receivers ever, and LeBron is more athletic, can jump higher. You know what I mean? I he could have been better than Megatron, is what I'm saying. So, yep. Cowboys pummel the Eagles on Monday Night Football, forty-one to twenty-one. Now. Uh, and I can't remember what the score was. I think it was seven to zero at the time. That Dak sneak was that a touchdown? I don't know. I'm I'm gonna say it was, but I know why they didn't say yes. All right, go ahead. Well, it, there's nothing there's nothing controversial with what I'm about to say. Really. Oh, okay. It was literally because the camera wasn't directly over the top of the line. But it was over to the side a little bit. I mean, it was over the top, but it was on the side. And that's their excuse for not doing it. There was a definitive evidence. I might do that cross the line. I hate the Cowboys, but that crossed. Yeah. And then when you got the side views of it, everything was blocked up. So you couldn't see if it actually ever did. So they ended up, it didn't mean shit, but. Right. Ultimately. But that's what, uh, that's what I got. Unless you got anything else. Boom. No, let's hop into it, man. Let's start with uh, some college football recap here, man. There were some good games this weekend, and we can just correct. We don't have to cover every game from the top 25, but we can start towards the top with our Bama. Top three, basically, Bama, Georgia, Oregon. They all did what was expected, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean. Uh, Georgia, 62-0. to zero. So, good God. <laughs> Yeah, what was Bama? 67 to 14. I mean, they both. Yeah. 60, 63 to 14. 63 to 14. Um, but that being said, Alabama better be sweating a little bit. Yeah. You know, this may be. This may be the hardest way to get to the college football playoff that they've seen in quite a while. Yeah. So, I agree. Um, not going to lie. I was really nervous about uh, our Hawkeyes, though. Yeah, only won twenty four to fourteen against Colorado State. Yeah, I was worried. We were, we were down fourteen seven. Um, we just weren't looking good, and then we kind of decided to come and play. Uh, and defense showed up. Yeah, defense showed up. Got a couple TDs there. Um, it was closer than we wanted, but you know what? Usually in the past, I have to admit we lose games like this. So I think it's a I think it's a good sign. Well, we'll touch on that a little bit here. Uh, about the Hawkeyes next game. So yeah, uh, Clemson, number nine in the nation, drops all the way down to twenty five. Why do they drop down to twenty five? 
They lost to North Carolina State 27-21. Oh, my God. Hey, look at this, though. They scored 21 points, Jimmer. <laughs> right. So, there's that. But, damn, dropping from 9 to 25. I haven't seen a drop like that in forever. I can't believe it. No, it is all out of courtesy and respect because they've been that dominant over the last, what, five years? Five years, yeah. That they didn't get dropped out of the 25. They're 2-2. Two and two. And they're not good. They're here's the thing. I think this is this has to be all on coaching. That team is so stacked with four and five star players. If you just let them go out and play, they're one of the best teams in the country. So this is this is just coaching. What man. happened? There's from, nothing else. I know they lost a few players. I know they lost some big time players too. When you lose Etn, you lose uh, Trevor Lawrence. You lose. I, I'm sure they lost a uh, receiver or two, but. What the hell happened? Agulile or whatever stepped in a few games last year and fucking balled out. Now offense is anemic. Yeah. That, uh, I, I, I don't know. Uh, they're struggling. Uh, forking them. For, yeah, I think for, I mean, I think at this point they could lose. Four games before it's all said and done. So, uh-huh. yeah, forking them for sure. So, we were talking about this off the air. They face Boston College. It is at Clemson. They face Boston College. Boston College is coming in undefeated. By the way, one of my preseason sleepers. Yes, sir. Good call. They are Clemson is 16 and a half point favorites. They barely got to 21. They had a game this year that they scored, what, 13 or 14 points, and you're 16.5-point favorites. At what point this season have you shown that you're worthy of that big a double-digit favorite? Yeah, I agree. This 21 points they scored this past weekend I think was their high for the season. So, I don't know. Maybe maybe the betters are thinking they're going to be pissed and come back and you know win by close to three touchdowns. Like I, I, I can't see the logic. So... We'll do a preview of the weekend, but I'm already planning and betting on that. That seems like horseshit. Yeah, I'm not trying to give too many spoilers to our picks or anything, on, which we'll be doing on Thursday evening. Um, but I, I'm not seeing that. Uh, like we already touched on, Georgia 62-0 to zero against Vandy. Uh, Oregon. Well, Oregon uh, was actually in a tight battle through the third with Arizona. Arizona's 0-4, by the way. Uh, what was it? It was nineteen to twenty four, and then Oregon did Oregon things. Yep, they can put up seventeen in the fourth. So you you probably are feeling okay about your bet at least. Yeah, definitely. They've got um, some health things, and their guys are only going to come back stronger. So they'll be fine. They'll be better. Um, it's kind of they're kind of one of those teams that can turn it on when they want, and I think that's what we saw against Arizona too. Um. Arkansas, baby. <laughs> this was my pick for the weekend. They beat AM. Uh they're now in the top ten. Definitely well deserved. Uh they I mean they put it to them too. It wasn't yep. as close as the score even indicated. They it, and it was interesting too. It wasn't just on the run game, but they had a lot of big passing plays. Seems like they're opening things up a little bit. This weekend coming up, they play Georgia. And so that's gonna be a super interesting game. But man, I'm loving me some Razorbacks this year. You're hogging it. Riding that hog. Riding the hog. So, I'm sitting there trying to find... Where the hell did it go? Who they they got this week, you said? Georgia. Georgia. Okay, right here. You're riding the hog. And we talked about this one, too. I cannot believe... and, And we already mentioned how... How much Georgia's balling out this year. They look... Yep, they look fierce. But Arkansas has been playing some damn good football. They are 18 and a half point underdogs. Yeah, that says a lot. It is at Georgia. So maybe that's juicing her a little bit, but. Yeah, I think it's going to be. A, it, we'll talk more about it. I think it'd be a close game. Um, closer than that, but fucking. Georgia is so good, though, too. It's hard to ride that hog into that game. We'll see. Yep. If I get boozed up before our podcast and make a dumb bet. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's highly likely. You yeah, know. Uh, Ohio State bounce 59-7 uh, to seven against Akron. It's kind of what you should be doing against Akron. Yeah, that's like your little brother there. Yep. Uh, Florida beat up 
Tennessee. So what what happened there? I feel like there was a <laughs> oh warm whiskey wager. Was there was there a warm whiskey wager on that one? Florida to I think I think you just no. Ultimately, we just bet Florida was going to win. But I think what you wanted to do was bet the you didn't think that I think the line was uh nineteen and a half or something like that. Um, and they covered that with twenty four. But yeah, that looked good. And I tell you what. It's up to you if you want to pay up your warm whiskey wager this morning. I still have a couple to pay that we're going to do when Rio gets back, so we can just cover everything when he gets back. Yeah, we'll get hammered when he gets back. Yeah, we'll just be – nobody's going to work. Yeah. That's what will happen there. Uh, then we – and yeah, not to take away from anything Florida did. Florida's – Florida's going to be damn good. It's just too bad that for them they play in a conference with Georgia and Alabama. Yeah. You know? Hey, God, that Bama game was so close, too. That says a lot yeah. about Florida, man. Yeah. Uh, mind you, that one was in the swamp this time, too. So it might have been different, a lot closer if it was in Tennessee. Yeah. You never know. <laughs> never know. I'll give you that. Uh, Notre Dame, just like we expected, it was one of my picks. Uh, 41 to 13 against Wisconsin at Wisconsin. This game was close. It was 10 to 10, 2 3. And then Notre Dame took the brakes off, and kicked their teeth in. They dropped 31 in the fourth. Yep. That uh, Wisconsin quarterback is just he's just not coming through. Wisconsin doesn't look great. What did they draw? I was trying to see. Are they out of the top 25 now with that yep. loss, too? Yeah. Uh, I do believe, yeah. Yep. Yeah, they are. Yep. Okay. Uh, just not looking like a Wisconsin team that we're accustomed to seeing. So That makes uh, me feel good uh, for the Hawkeyes here. It, so It does. Hawkeyes need to find their offensive game, though. They need to find more balance and be a little more consistent. Um, but uh, Iowa State loses a close one to Baylor, 29-31. to 31. And I do believe, I did not get to watch this one, but I do believe Iowa State uh, went for two on the final play to try to tie it. I think he threw an interception, though. Yeah, I'll take credit for this too. I wasn't sure if Iowa State would actually get beat, but I said there's potential for an upset. Uh, Baylor playing at home, they're a solid team. Iowa State is obviously a good team, but no matter what in college, man, when you travel, when you travel, it's you know quite the haul down there. It's going to be a tough environment. So um, it it also hurts Iowa State's chances to do a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, Especially if Oklahoma keeps hanging on to these close ass wins, um, and Iowa State falters, so. So, and this is exactly the point of showing. This is a perfect example of showing respect to Clemson. They're both two and two. They both lost to, you know, Iowa State lost to uh, number five Iowa, and then Baylor, who's also undefeated. Yep. Clemson lost to Georgia. Georgia. Obviously, number two team, and but then lost to North Carolina State, who was three and one. So, that's that, and that's the definition of like just showing respect for the multiple uh, many years of being excellent. Yeah, you know, I think if we were to make this bet right now, if Iowa State played Clemson, I think Iowa State would beat Clemson today. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, Brees Hall had twenty seven carries for a hundred and ninety yards. Yep. Offense was not an issue for this team. Pur- I mean, Purdy had 263 yards passing himself, only one touchdown passing. But yeah, uh, yeah, the, you put those two teams against each other. Iowa State rolls them up. Agreed. Uh, BYU sneaks one out uh, against South Florida, 35 to 27. Um, actually, Florida almost came. Yeah, South Florida almost came back on them. So. Yeah, there were some other close games, too, that you wouldn't have expected. Michigan barely beat Rutgers 2013. Um, now, I do think some of their wins have been overrated, if you will, you know, dropping 50, 60 points. But what were you going to say? So what was that? Was that my – I don't know if I put that one down. Did I say Rutgers? I said some silly shit like Rutgers is going to beat Wolverines, right? Yeah. But yeah. I did. So that was just me being whatever because we were joking about it. But – I did say they were going to cover that yep. ridiculous and they line. Did. And they did, yeah. So, uh Rutgers are a lot better team than what they're going to than what they're getting respect for, that's for sure. 
Nebraska doing awesome. They're, they're hanging, though, I guess. I mean, to give them a titch of credit, like they're hanging. You think Oklahoma's better than I think they are. They hung with Oklahoma. Michigan State is a very good football team. They only lost by three. Um, I mean, they're still losing, so mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. But yeah. But they're hanging, and at, that was in that was that, at Michigan State, right? Yeah, it was. Too, so, that being said, at the end of the year, you're not going to remember all those when it just has that many losses in there in Moscow. Yeah. Hey, but at least you were close in like seven of them. Yeah. Who's there? Uh, Frost is that their coach? Yeah. He, he'll be gone soon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, North Carolina, number twenty-one. North Carolina at the time gets worked by Georgia Tech, forty-five to twenty-two. Yep. Sam Howell did go for 306 and two touchdowns, though. Yeah, so stat-wise, he's going to look great at the end of the year. They're just – it's not going to be enough for the Heisman, man. The, the, I really thought he could make a run, but the, I don't know. The, the expectations were way too high coming, you know. Yeah. And we were on it, too. Yep. We were. Uh, I'm off. Let's go ahead and make that clear right now. I'm off. Jump from that bandwagon. Yep. Right, right, right up off that one. Uh, Auburn gets away with one uh, against Georgia State, thirty-four to twenty-four. Yeah, that um, Auburn's I th- a fine I, team. I think they'll yeah. be all right. Like yeah. I said, Auburn kind of got stung a little bit by the Penn State game the week before, and they'll be just fine. Who they got? Who do they have this week? LSU, I think. LSU, and I is that in the Bayou? In the Bayou, it is. Yes, and sir. they're getting three and a half points. Um, off the top of my head, I I think I still take Auburn. Then. Mm-hmm. You know, I agree. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Let's roll on down. Your UCLA Bruins won thirty-five to twenty-four at Stanford. Yeah, they needed that. Uh, coming off that tough loss against Fresno State, so. Good deal. I was a little worried. Stanford's not a bad team. Um, their record doesn't really show, I don't think. But good. Good deal. Got to keep them running. Uh, Got to look good somewhere here with some of these picks. So Oklahoma State wins 31-20 to against number 25, Kansas State. Oh. I honestly, I told, you, uh, I told you off the air, I honestly didn't realize Oklahoma State was kind of quietly doing some work here. Yeah. Yeah, they're not a bad team either. Until they face someone actually really good. Yeah. In the in the man, I'm throwing up parentheses or real good in the Big Twelve. There you go. Yeah. Uh, so what are we thinking? We're you got anything special to talk about in what you did see in college football? No, not really. There were some good games, but um, oh, we do have to touch on one that isn't on here. What are you thinking? Uh, the little guy isn't here. Yeah. Go ahead. <sighs> Fine. Rio, <laughs> this one's for you. <laughs> Texas put up a college basketball score. Again, who did the Texas Tech, right? Texas Tech. Against Texas Tech. So it was like 77 to 34. 70 to 35. 70 to 35. That's a, damn, that's some offense right there. But... They also gave up 35 points to Texas Tech, so that defense needs to get some, needs to get their shit together. But Xavier Worthy, hell of a game. Texas, what was that? Te- a wide receiver, I assume. Five receptions, a hundred yards, and three TDs. Freshman. Okay, not bad, not bad. Give Texas a little bit of love there, man. Yeah. All right. Yep. So, we'll go ahead and kick her on over to some NFL action. NFL. Jimmer, before we start, here's what I want to bring up. Mm-hmm. 3-0 and teams, 0-3 teams. Tell me who's real and who's fake, okay? Okay. 3-0. and Raiders. Fake. Ooh, okay. Broncos. Real-ish. Slow down. That needs to be a deeper fake than the Raiders fake. No. That should have been fake. No, no. Damn, they've beaten no. nobody. Yeah, it don't matter. Way better defense. When they're beating people, they are beating them. It isn't close. Uh, so they're beating uh, who they're supposed to, right? Uh, and they're beating it. Uh, so I say ish. I claimed it. I told you at the beginning of the season, 
that that defense is pretty damn good. Yeah. Uh, they have all the offensive weapons around there. You know, I mean, yeah, they lost Jerry Judy. I think they lost another receiver. Yeah. Um, fuck, his name's off the... No, not Tim tongue. Patrick, is it? It's no. uh, uh, Hamler? Yes. Yep. Okay. So they lost another one, but that bodes well, I guess, for, especially for fantasy, for Cortland Sutton. And you still have Noah Fant. You still have weapons. And Melvin Gordon has some fire lit under his ass, too. So, you know, they might not be against the best teams, but they are working these teams over. So, yeah, so I say ish. All but, right. Go ahead. Panthers. Real. Uh, but but that being said, I did name two major injuries. It's true. So hopefully they can keep the wheels on for um, – I don't know if J.C. Horns was season-ending IR, though. I think they were hoping that he could come back. Christian yeah, McCaffrey, they're hoping. Three, but, uh, four weeks or whatever. But that team looks so different. That defense is – what hitting top ten ish right now? Yeah, yeah, they look so, great. So that one looks real. Yeah, looks real. So let's talk about this one. Looks real. Could they win their division? Uh, yeah. no. Tampa Bay still wins that division, but it's gonna be a fuck of a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. So if I'm thinking on the top of my head, if I'm throwing a number out there, Tampa Bay thirteen and four, I could see Panthers going um eleven and six. I bet you somewhere in there. I think that's fair. Now that being said, I I do want to see how they respond after that uh, with no Christian McCaffrey and stuff. We'll see how the yeah. season kind of goes here. So like I said, they're probably gonna miss him for at least six weeks, so Yep. We'll see how he responds, but yeah, no, I think they're I think they're legit, uh, but they're not quite. Uh, Tampa Bay knows how to win, obviously. They've got to do something with that defense, though. They've they've got to Tampa do something. Bay's? Yeah, that's that's the only concern I have. Tom Brady can drop forty on you every game, what? but the defense has to be able to not give up forty. What what concern know? is there really though? Stan, we all said Stafford was going to be ridiculous this year. So you just got you got beat by a guy that we that we're thinking that would. be. I'm not just thinking about that game though. Okay. I'm thinking about. Their defense hasn't looked great all year. No, the run, the run no. defense. Obviously, we I expected w- that, right? I'm I'm confused though because weren't wasn't the Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, defense like the highest rated in fantasy football to go ahead and go grab and right? Yeah, stupid. Yeah, seventh round, I think somebody. Yes, yeah, well, not defense. even that. It, like they were actually had them like so much further. Like on if you go to ADP and all that shit. Yeah. If you go on there, they had them so far above. Like the next, I'm like, dude, come on. No. Agreed. That's the only concern I have. I but I agree. I think Tampa wins a division, but the Panthers are going to be really good. Uh, three and O teams. There's two more. Yep. Rams. Oh, 100 percent legit. Like 100%. I said, I, it was going to be hard for you to find a loss. When the losses happen or a loss happens, it will be probably in division. It will be because like they a all crazy play. Cardinals game because yep. Kyler it, goes off or it, something. Or or even the Seahawks. Seahawks could upset them for one. You know, just. I don't think so either, but <laughs> I'm trying to talk. I'm trying to toss my boy O'Borny some love because yeah, uh, he he was not happy with me uh, making fun of his sea chickens. Yeah, it was rough. And then speaking of the Cardinals, the last three and O team, uh, legit. Yeah, I give them. Uh, I've got to give them more credit than I did at the beginning of the season. They look fine. Mm-hmm. Kyler's going to keep them in every game. That um, defense has got to be surprising you some, right? Yeah. Yeah, the defense I mean, I'm not, has been good. I'm not saying they're doing shutdown shit where they're keeping you from scoring even 20 points, but they're a very opportunistic defense. So they turn your mistakes into points. Yeah. They, so I'm not as bullish on legit as you. Mm-hmm. Mostly because they should be one and two right now. Well, for, well first the off, Jaguars you, for, almost. So I know they pulled away late in the game. The Jaguars were balling with them. Mm-hmm. That team should not be in. If this Why is wouldn't a legit, they be? They have a future Hall of Fame quarterback they, on their roster. They, maybe they're going to draft one. They do not right now. They do right but, now. Um, they could have lost to the Jags, and they definitely should have lost to the Vikings, right? So they mm-hmm. really, they're really they 3-0, and but they could easily be 1-2. and two. Do you have to be non and not as much bullish on them because they're ahead of your shitty Niners, your Super Bowl picker? 
I mean, that could be part of it. Okay. Sure. I didn't know if there was yeah. like a little bit of prejudice going. Okay. But uh, I, I do think they're a fine team. Yeah. Uh, 3-0 is tough, though. Uh, then looking at the 0-3 teams. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love it. The Lions? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Rough. Oh, dude, no, that one's that one's easy all day. They found new ways to lose, you know? Yeah, they did. They, they, you could just hear, I don't know if you've seen, like, some of the video uh, from the stands. Like, when that kick uh, got booted up, and like we already stated earlier, it was a record 66 yards. 66. You could just hear, like, it go, it starts going, and it goes through, it, or it clunks. Yeah, and then bounces and over. And then bounces yeah. in. So another inch shorter when I made it. <laughs> and you just hear the whole crowd. <sighs> <laughs> just the air gets sucked out of the stadium. That's nuts. Yeah, man. they're nowhere near, they're nowhere near being right. They're, yeah, they're nowhere near being right. All right, the Jets. That one's a little tougher. So if I'm going to stick to me saying that they're a shitty franchise because of how they are managed, I'd have to say it's legit. I thought there would be... I thought they'd be more competitive. I don't know if that Makai Becton injury is fucking with them even more. I mean, they already didn't have like a strong offensive line by any stretch of the imagination. And then you lose your stud, huge ass mammoth of a man, Mackay Beckton, your left tackle. So I'd have to say, yeah, no, that's it. Isn't like I'm shocked by it by any stretch of the imagination. I just thought they'd be a little more competitive. That's all. I'm, that's all I should say. Yes, that is legit. Zero and three. Yeah, they're they're looking rough. Um, and then the last one. This was Jimmer's uh, sleeper pick to win the division. They're looking good. The New York Football Giants. Oh, that ain't your last one. It was Lions. Giants and Jets. Those are the mm, 0 and 3. No. Oh, there's, the Jags. There, the Jags there's there's two in one division. The Colts and the Jaguars are both 0 and 3. The Colts haven't won a game? No. I missed that then. Okay. Yeah, so we'll go ahead and I'll, I'll keep you up, baby bird. All right. Climb underneath the swing. I didn't realize the Colts haven't won a game. That is okay. All right. So who'd you say? Giants? Yeah, New York Giants. Uh, fake ish. Fake ish. Holy shit. I just skipped that division. The Jags and the Colts. Both yeah. are 0 and 3. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I'm going to say fake ish. And they're still waiting for Saquon to like, take the training wheels off because they're not giving them the carries that, I don't know, they're, they're taking care of the knee. Um, yeah, I understand they lost the Falcons. The Falcons are not good. They, you guys were more bullish on them winning game more games than what they're going to. That's true. Bad call, yeah. Yeah. They look bad. Uh, but that being said, uh, I think the Giants, I mean, they barely lost that one. I, I, I think that defense is, I'm not saying they're really good, so how do I say this without saying, because I was going to say they're too good to, for this to be, but it isn't like they're superstars by any stretch of the imagination. I'm going to stick with it's not real. I'm going to ride this one out a little bit longer before I go ahead and swallow my pride on this one and say that I was misinformed because I think that they can still I, – watching the Eagles, the Eagles I think are so much further behind. Like what we watched last night, I'm like yeah. – and I like Hurts. Don't get me wrong. I love Devontae Smith. They're not in this uh, – Giants have some stuff to get corrected. They do need to get it corrected like very soon. But I don't know what the fuck's going on with Washington either. Well, and more specifically, Washington's defense. defense agreed. Which we were both all. I think all three of us were yep. new John, except for he wasn't because he wanted the Cowboys. But the pressure just isn't there. So their defensive no. line is even getting there. Right. You know, I I tell you one thing I like about the Giants is they're using Danny Dimes to run more. He's athletic. Mm-hmm. He's quick, which I didn't. I guess until seeing really, I know you saw that big run last year that where he fell down, but until seeing some of these plays this year, I'm like, this man's actually kind of athletic. I thought he's a little more robotic than he is. He's mm-hmm. quick. They're using him more. If they want to get uh, Saquon more involved, it's don't you got to do some maybe RPOs or? I just don't think he has. You know what I mean? Yeah, but the one thing that's going to hold them back is actually how you so eloquently put it, Danny Dimes. I'm not sold on his arm. 
the only thing that keeps him intriguing is his legs, of course, out of, you know, yeah. what you were surprised by or whatever. But I remember seeing him a little bit last year, and I'm not surprised by it. I just don't think he has the arm talent. Yeah. You know. They're uh, not a good team, no well, matter how you put it. Let's so. calm down there. Let's go on. Go ahead and get your next one. All right, let's go Jags. No idea how I missed them because they've got this – just bust of a quarterback uh, uh, playing well, you for You need him, to so. calm your ass down right now. Now, we'll answer the question quick. Uh, 100% legit, 0-3. In fact, um, I don't see them winning a game, maybe. Texans later on, possibly. He'll be a barn burner. Thick neck. He might pull it out, though. Long neck. <laughs> but yeah, long, long neck. neck. Yeah. Yeah, nice. you see that? Crazy, yeah. You see that uh, that meme that had uh, you mar- uh, old long neck and then thick neck in the same picture, and it said, uh, I'm going to tell my kids this was, God, what's that quarterback's name? Mills. Mills and uh, Mark Ingram. Yes. <laughs> Started laughing. So good. Uh, that being said, legit, uh, like I've said many times, I hope and pray that Trevor Lawrence gets out of there. I would love to see them breaking news. They trade Trevor Lawrence for two first round picks or something, something stupid, you know. Um, obviously, it's not going to happen. You don't, you don't go after them. But that was a conversation piece at work with a couple guys. Is before he has the ability or the chance to get out of Jacksonville, do you think they? I know what your answer is because you already don't like him, but. Do you think they could ruin him? They definitely could ruin him, yeah. Before he even gets his out of his rookie deal. Yeah. Yep, they Which definitely could. They yeah. th- Between them and the Jets, they're just good at ruining quarterbacks that seem like they're going to be fine. Uh, so the Jags are dog shit. We can agree on that. They're not going to be yep. good this year. Uh, the Colts, 0-3. Uh, that is fake. Okay. Uh, that is just a little bit of health going on, and they're still getting used to each other and shit like that. Now, could I see a could I see where this plays out and Wentz becomes a head case and the season goes down the shitter? Yep, I could see that. I don't think it's there anywhere near that, and they'll get her. They'll get it corrected. I mean, the AFC isn't exactly outside of the what is that outside? Uh, yeah, outside of the Bills. I mean. The AFC East isn't very strong. The uh, AFC West is looking, I mean, obviously really good. Um, AFC North will be competitive, but there's room there. So I think I think they can rebound. And Tennessee isn't blown the doors off yet. No. Well, here's what I'm concerned. They've got some injuries, you're right, but they've only scored 56 points in three games. Mm-hmm. Now, there's only two teams, so they're tied with the Giants. There's only two teams that have scored less than them, and that's the lowly Falcons, who have just looked rough this year, mm-hmm. and the New York Jets. So they've got to be able to – I don't understand what they're doing with that run game, that two-headed back. Like, take a look at Cleveland and use their scheme or something. You've got two studs back there. Uh, Taylor isn't getting enough love for mm, whatever reason. Right. Um, right. You've got to use them more. You can't put everything on Wentz. That's proven, right? You, you've yeah. got to move it around. I agree. It's fake, though. I think they'll – at 0-3, it's almost impossible to make the playoffs, but, but there's they an could extra, be fine. There's you know? an extra game this year, too. I could, still, I could know, see them winning change a nine bit. games. I mean, they've still got to play division. Yep. Houston, uh, Jacksonville, they could – I don't know. They could get one against Tennessee. So they, they'll they'll be okay, but they've got to get that offense clicking. That's my biggest problem. Yeah. So. Oh, so – what was I going to ask you? Is there any team that you're not worried about that is one and two right now? That's a good call. And try to stay away from our, and I'm going to try to do it too. Try to stay away from our own team because I, th- we'll make, uh, we can both make an analysis on what we believe with them, but try to go, try to go outside the box here. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, besides the Vikings, it's going to be the Chiefs. I'm not worried about the Chiefs being one and two. I don't think they're going to be world beaters like they have been. I think defenses are figuring them out. So I think eh, they could be more like 10, 11 wins, but they'll be fine. Um, 
then just looking down the list, the Steelers look like shit. Mm-hmm. The Texans are obviously not really one and two. That's a Jaguars win. The Eagles, the Bears, the Falcons. I am maybe okay. If if I stretched it, I'm not a big fan of the Seahawks, but the Seahawks being one and two might be the best one and two team outside of our Vikings and the Chiefs. I think they are actually they are. So there's a, there's a few for me and there's a few two not including our team okay okay I'm curious i agree with you uh well the chiefs yes like i i think we shouldn't even put that in the conversation yeah that like, should be like the vikings yeah like, agree. i'm like mahomes the is barring barring health uh this isn't really a conversation piece the raiders are not going to play like this much longer there's no way no way i'm sorry um, you, when you were saying not all oh, like last like last uh, week, not all two and zero oh and all zero oh and two are created the same or equal. Yeah, the Raiders had two kick ass wins, but then they played the Dolphins without Tua. I do believe what did, we haven't went over scores yet, but wasn't that game kind of close? It was overtime. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I couldn't quite remember, you know, so. Yeah. I, hey, you got to remember, I'm not riding the Raiders at all. No. Well, I do not understand, but I've got to pick them a lot of weeks. I'm like, no. I don't know why. I don't have a reason to pick them to win, but they're going to win. And we'll talk about who they're going to play next weekend and that, but it's is that the it's weird. It's that Gruden face that gets you sold. Uh, yeah. The Seahawks, I think they're, I think that's not quite, the record isn't indicative of it, and uh, and then Washington. I'm not like I'm not that worried. The reason why I'm not worried, there's too much talent on that defensive line to knock it to the quarterback. Eventually, it isn't like they every team's gonna shut this team out on the pressure. They're going to eventually, especially a Ron Rivera led team who's a defensive minded coach, will get this figured out. Now, if it was flip flopped, and I'm and it's almost the same analysis I'm, I would give the Vikings. Now, if it was the offense that was a problem and the defense was balling out and the record was like that, I might worry a little more with Ron Rivera and stuff like that because he's – I like it the other way because he's a defensive-minded coach and he will figure out his defense. I have no doubt about that. That defensive line is way too talented too. So, And their offense is doing just fine, right? It's the same analysis I have for the Vikings zone. I don't know if you do know this, but – our boy Kirky is leading the league with like 73.9% completion percentage. No interceptions. 10 touchdowns? I think it's 10 touchdowns. Three, three, uh, eight. It might no, be nine. Maybe. I think yeah. it's nine. He's got a 118 quarterback rating. Yeah. He's not getting talked about enough. He's not He's not getting any love. Yeah. Who did I say? Dark Horse MVP? Mr. Oh. Kirk Cousins, baby. Mr. Kirky. Uh, that being said, what was missing with Minnesota this year and actually last year, of course, but they were missing a lot of players is their defense. Like I just stated, I would be more worried about the Vikings if their offense was struggling and their defense was doing fine. I don't mind the defense struggling, especially with the, and they have the talent there now, uh, back this year. Right. That I have confidence. I think Mike Zimmer, I think it's time to move on eventually here. I do I do believe that. But as long as he's the coach, the one thing I'm not worried about is the defense and him getting it corrected. If the offense keeps keeping them in games and hanging and doing their job, and you don't need – we don't want him to do super Kirk stuff and have the whole pressure on his back every single game, though. That's got to stop because eventually that will buckle. That being said, he does have, what, three? Yeah, Patrick Mahomes has three more interceptions than he does. Yep. So there is that. Yeah. Kirk's gone over 200 pass attempts with no picks, mm-hmm. which is phenomenal, right? That's Aaron yep. Rodgers esque for everybody that thinks he's the GOAT. So, yeah, just same. Uh, same I, but I feel the same way. Washington, Minnesota, kind of the same. So if it, so, I need to touch on the Vikings game itself. The first half, it was a tale of two halves. First half, yes, he threw three touchdowns. It was twenty-one. I think it was twenty-one seventeen. 
It's also in front of a, a fucking crazy Viking crowd that you could tell that they've been waiting to get back into that stadium. Yeah. It was loud. Um, <clears throat> the second half, that was a Mike Zimmer defense. Yep. And then, by the way, we also showed that uh, our kicker might be just fine, even after missing a game winner. We'll see. Yeah, I am not trying to get overly optimistic. Like, hold on, I've been booted in the nuts <laughs> by fucking Vikings yeah, kickers. We both have, man. Yeah, Many throughout times. whole life. So, um, with that being said, he he rebounded nicely. So that's a, yeah. that's what my point is. Like, it, and because he's not that old of a kicker, he's a pretty young kicker, and you miss a game winner, and Mike Zimmer actually didn't go like overboard and just cut his kicker. He likes to do that. He yeah, likes to do no that shit. a lot. He gave yeah. up on uh, Daniel Carlson right away, and, like we talked about, and I think he's a borderline Pro Bowler now for the Raiders. Yeah, yeah. Just sometimes you got to calm down and let them. They got to figure out how to fail before they su- can succeed. Yeah, agreed. They were they were fine in it. You know, I, I'm not big on the Seahawks, but that offense, they've got talent. And we locked him down in the second half, man. Yep. So that, I think it says a lot. Um, it was a good win. We needed it. We fucking needed it. Mm-hmm. Alexander Madison went over 100 himself with no Dalvin. He looked great, man. Uh, Justin Jefferson doing his thing. Yeah, he's swagging out there. Thielen had like, uh, what, 70 yards, a couple touchdowns. and. Well, Madison was huge because the last time we played Seattle. He did the same thing. We, Yeah, but he also is a reason. I shouldn't say the reason. We we would have won that game if you would have hit the right hole. So, yeah. at the, you remember that yeah, at the, the end fo- of the game? Yeah, was it fourth and – yeah. It was wide open. And he wide went, open. Yeah. And he went right for the – for the where the design was versus the, hey, look at the huge gaping <laughs> fucking hole over here. Yeah. So, it, hey, it was really Richardson. cool for him. Yeah, yeah, no shit. Look at what's going on here. So, it was good, it was good to see him get that and get that kind of monkey off his back. The Vikings, for that matter, period, beating the Seahawks. Um, so just going down, there's a few games that you kind of expected, right? Panthers crushed the Texans. Um, long neck didn't look bad though. Mills didn't look terrible. Um, and the Panthers defense is pretty good. So. And that gets back to what I told you. Brandon cooks, baby. Yeah. Yeah. That was a but, good call. We talked about that. Yeah. I had yeah. to, you, when you're, when you're a rookie quarterback, yes, the safety blankets, usually the tight end or you're running back, but I'm telling you right now, most coaches will sit there and go to their guy. You can't go wrong if you go to your swinging dick receiver or your or your or your big time player altogether. But yep. when you when your top offensive weapon is Brandon Cooks and there's really nothing else outside of that, you're going Brandon Cooks' way. You know. Yep. So and as long did. as as long as he's back there, whoever does have uh, Brandon Cooks. And first off, I wasn't huge on it because of I don't want any Texans this year. Yeah. But you shouldn't feel bad starting this man inside now. I mean, as long as uh, or every week, Davis Mills is going to continue to look towards the guy that's going to make plays for him to try to make. It's going to make, you know, it's going to make his job easier. Hopefully, give them a shot to, um, hopefully keep the job for himself. So, uh, who? Yeah. What else? So the Panthers crushed the Texans. We yep. talked about the Vikings. The Bills. Destroyed, yeah. Washington. The Washington football team. So uh, Josh Allen threw four touchdowns. Yeah, he's back in rhythm. He's back. Yeah, yeah I'd say he's back for sure. They had one rough game. Um, he he looks fine. And that I mean, again, I know Washington's defense isn't playing as great as we expected, but they're still a good defense. And he just did what he wanted. Um, so the Bills look really good. Mm. They look a lot better than the Chiefs. They're the class of the AFC right mm-hmm. now. I don't care about the undefeated Raiders or Broncos. What? Uh, the Bills are the class of the AFC right now for sure. Um, Browns took care of the Bears. So you had an interesting stat. Oh, first off, score of that game was 26-6. to six. Baker Mayfield was pedestrian-esque, 246 and a tutty. Uh, Nick, Nick Chubb was kind of kept in line, uh, 22 carries, uh, 84 yards. And Odell Beckham, welcome back, uh, five receptions, 77 yards. Respect- respectable line for being out for as long as he was. Agreed. But please bring up your interesting stat about – go ahead. You know what it is. Yeah, well, I touched on it earlier, but the Bears' offense had less yards than Justin Tucker's game-winning field goal. 
So the Bears offense had 47 total yards. They were sacked. So Fields was sacked nine times for 67 yards. And my defensive MVP pick, Mr. Miles Garrett, had four and a half sacks. They <laughs> they just looked – the Browns looked great, uh, The but – I think it says more about the Bears. The Bears look so bad. Yeah. There was, dude, there were six completed passes. So bad. Let's make this very clear. We are not beating up on Justin Fields. At least I'm not. No, not. But not for yet. the love of God, do not waste this man's talent. No. Because I think he has everything you need in a franchise quarterback. It did not look good. No, it didn't. And there's a lot of chatter on the socials and stuff like that, people talking about that old line, and I know it's shitty, but the bottom line is Matt Nagy is not a good football coach. He's not doing anything to put his guys where they need to be to succeed, mm -hmm. to win ball games. I mean, we, we talked about it numerous times, that they're not using Allen Robinson for shit, mm -mm. and he's your best player. Like, it's, it's just bad. They need to get a new coach. You already got the rookie in playing, just boot Nagy, get somebody else in there. Um, yeah. Jimmy, you mentioned this earlier. You oh. need somebody that trusts Fields and wants him. Yep, that's what that's what yep. you need to look for. That's exactly what you need to get. You need you don't go out and just get any coach. First off, you need to find a coach. Obviously, you believe in their what they are doing, their scheme and everything. But also that someone that actually believes in Fields and isn't looking for their own guy. Justin Fields needs to be their guy. That being said, what was uh, what was I just about to tell you? Um. Allen Robinson, two catches, 27 yards. God. That's actually so pretty good. Oh, that's what I was going to ask him. you. So <laughs> shut up. No, no. Like that's, okay. uh, what, 13 and a half like, yards uh, per reception. Yeah. They've been giving him like five-yard slant routes is all. So that's actually, yeah. okay. Okay. Yeah, but still, they're uh, being underutilized. No, she's not showing any respect towards that man. Don't uh, – I wouldn't uh, – thank God I'm not a Bears fan. Yeah. Because I, I don't think they know how to do shit right either. So – uh, my question was going to be to you because you were busting up on Matt Nagy, right? Which coach would you rather have then? Hmm. Nagy or Adam Gase? Nagy. Okay. That Nagy, was quick. Nagy, okay. Nagy, <laughs> Nagy. Thousand percent of the time. Okay. Yeah. You don't. I wouldn't want Gase to coach my high school football team. Okay. I wouldn't I want, want him to coach anything. my son's flag football he's, team. He's terrible, dude. No. Like, <sighs> Nagy's bad. They both need to be fired. I, Gase, I still don't understand why he is where he is still. But, no, I'll take Nagy. Um, unfortunately, that's a rough one, Jimmer. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> well, you were all, I, all I meant was you were pretty, like, uh, pretty adamant. And I'm like, hold on. I got a scenario here for you. Yeah, that's good. Then we got the. Uh, what about Jeff Fisher? All day, you tell oh. you tell me my team can be. I guess now what would it be eight and nine or nine and eight or whatever. Yeah, what That's was fine. it? So before that, it was what uh, seven and nine, eight and eight, nine and seven. Yep, somewhere in there. Five hundred coach. Five hundred coach. It. Take it. I'll take that all day because the Bears will not be five hundred. <laughs> Neither <laughs> not will the Nagy. Like, no shit. Yeah. So we talked about that also, and a lot of people forget. Oh, they weren't that bad that long ago. Just a couple years ago, Nagy was a coach. Blah, blah, blah. They also had a ridiculous like top five defense. A defense that was, I mean, they I had they had the pieces, Khalil Mack and uh, the corners, and they they had everything on every layer. But their defense coordinator was Vic Fangio, who is the head coach out in, with the Broncos now. Their defense has slipped a little bit more and more since. When you play, when you have that good a defense, it makes the job of your offense that much easier. You have more stabs at it. So, yeah, Mitchell Trubisky looked pretty good that year. You know, yeah, you get that yeah. many cracks at it. Let's not get hoodwinked by, because as soon as he went, all of a sudden the Bears started slipping, started slipping, started slipping. Yeah. Keep Matt Nagy because I'm a Vikings fan. He's supposed to be this offensive mind too, wasn't he? Like, and that's the worst part of his coaching. I don't, I don't know. I don't get it. As bad as Mike McCarthy and his ability to see the clock, because he had another issue last night. <laughs> Yeah, like I, Eli, like Peyton Manning was like yelling at the TV screen. Yep, right, like call time out, call time out, call time out. Yep. Uh, we mentioned a little bit about it already. Ravens beat the Lions nineteen to seventeen. 
Uh, what to say? Ravens stunned the Lions on fourth and nineteen conversion, and then Tucker hit a sixty-six yard and needed every bit, every inch of it to get it in there. But it is now an NFL record. Yeah, that game was interesting. The Ravens couldn't get the run game going. Um, they, I mean, when you have Lamar Jackson throwing the ball over 30 times, that's not a good sign. But the game wasn't as close as what it should or it shouldn't have been anyway because Brown had I, three or four drops where he would have had some huge plays. Um, so that game could have easily been a blowout, but it wasn't. turned into a fun game, I guess, close game at least. Um I wish they put, yeah, I wish they put drops on here, too. I don't know how many he had. Uh, you must have seen that, but. Yeah, he had some big ones, like open, should have scored, probably. Two of them should have been touchdowns for sure, um, just flat-out drops. Uh, not good. Three, so three games in, you got Steelers are obviously going that exact opposite direction like we thought they were. Would. Oh, is is Ben Roethlisberger a bad quarterback? <laughs> it's time to hang it up. There was a moment that ah. was there a moment there was a moment that I'm sitting there watching him and it's almost like it's finally dawning on him. Like, okay, my career is over. I think. Yeah, that defense can't carry you every fucking game. Yeah. Man. Oh, dude, did you see Come the on. one pick he threw? Oh, off the off the side a little bit, but it was like directly at a linebacker, like directly at him, like. What I I understand that you were going thinking that your guy was there for a second, but it isn't like that dude like uh, was hiding behind another player and then jumped the route. No, literally like step, barely even had to step into it. Yep, he just it just isn't there anymore. No, he uh, thank God though he took less on his contract to yeah. help the other guys. It's not because he's terrible. Uh, it's not because he looks like shit this year and can't utilize <laughs> all of the talent that he has. Um, it's because he's a nice guy. He's generous. So. Outside of the offensive line, does he not have one of the most talented teams around him, too? Three stud receivers, yeah. an awesome rookie running back. That I, I mean, what the hell? What you else? can make an argument for a goddamn legit fourth. You're thinking about you're forgetting about James Washington also. I was probably forgetting about Juju because I okay he's, he's <laughs> okay. at the bottom of that tier. Okay? okay, all right, I got you. But here's the deal. So look at they're very similar to Cincy. In that respect, right? Since he's got three mm-hmm. stud receivers, they've got a good running back, but but they have a good quarterback. Exactly. Thank you, Jimmer, for bringing that okay. up. Okay, and a, damn right. And a better offensive line than what they were getting credit for. They are getting better. They drafted. Yeah. They got one of their first round picks back from the year before that was out with injury tore his ACL. Yep. And that team believes. And Jamar Chase is not looking like he has a drop problem. Looking like one hell of a fucking stud, and looks like they got that right. Agreed. I think that defense is up and coming. Here's the deal. Tomlin doesn't like to make dramatic changes. Yep. He's a loyal, he's, he's a loyal guy. If they don't, this is going to be his worst record as a head coach this year. It will be. By far. It will. Uh, has he went under 500? I don't think he's ever went under 10 wins in a season. No, yeah, I do. I'm, I'm pretty confident in that. 10 wins. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, which is amazing. He's, he's going to be under that. Yeah, year. exactly. That, divi- that division is got nothing but better. Even the bottom feeder that was last year is nowhere near the bottom feeder it was last year. So <laughs> we, I think we're going to end up being correct on this one. You yeah. know, I really do. I really yeah. believe that Pittsburgh is going to finish off the year at the bottom unless they do something. Re- de- uh, their defense is good. Now they're missing TJ Watt. Like he missed this game yeah. also, but that defense is pretty damn good. It'll keep them com- looking competitive score wise. And they say, they've, unless they've they got to make a change. Re- yeah. Quarterback. Bring in Nick Foles. They've got to. No, you know who they need to bring in. Dwayne Haskins. Yeah. Oh, we talked about that. I'm not necessarily the biggest Haskins fan, but I no, think he's a no. Step so, up. so I'm not. I don't have a problem with Haskins, but I really don't think you're going to. They're definitely not going to get to ten wins with him. You, I really don't think so. What do you think? You think the move would be bringing somebody like Nick Foles? He no. could get the ball out there. No, I was wrong. no, I was being a smart ass about. Oh, that. I was like, oh, okay. no, I don't huh? really. If you're going to do this, then you just put in Haskins. Maybe you find out you have your next heir apparent this way. You get his, get it out there. If not, then you try to draft one. And sorry, Big Ben, we'd like you to walk out gracefully and say that you just want to do it by your own choice, but we're actually telling you it's time to go Yep. in the offseason. Might as well finish it off now. 
Man, we dwelled on that way too much. The Steelers are looking terrible. Um, let's touch on the Chargers beating the Chiefs, Jimmer. What say you? Did Patrick Mahomes look great? <laughs> uh, Patrick Mahomes did not look like Patrick Mahomes. Something... Hey, on a positive note, though, Clyde Edward went over, hit exactly 100 yards rushing. It's interesting they can do that when they don't win games. Yeah, right. Right? That's not their success to win games. I don't know. Justin Herbert looks pretty fucking good. Though. He looks so. Him and Mike Williams, baby. Yeah. He's finally hitting. We talked about yep. him, frick, what, four years ago yep. or whenever he came into the league? Seven receptions, 122 yes. and two tutties. Baby. Game winning touchdown as well. Yeah, yeah he's Let's he's go. swagging on a different level. Justin Herbert is all the confidence in the world. I like this guy coming out of college. I busted up on what he considers himself a, co- a quarterback guru and Eric White, who did not like him uh, coming out. I was like, dude, he just he has all that. I mean, maybe it didn't look sexy as last year. He might not. He should have might not came back or whatever. But maybe he needed to come back and get that extra experience because he looked God, he looks good. Yeah. Let's talk about the nuts on that coach. So, end of the game, you don't want to give the ball back to Mahomes. It's right. fourth and short. That's exactly why you do it. Yep, fourth and short. You go for it. Oh, there's a penalty. Now you're at fourth and nine. You still go for it, and you convert Mr. I believe it was Mike Williams there as well. Where were So, where were they at when they were at fourth and nine? What yardage? Mid, midfield-ish. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. So, they weren't in field goal range at that point. No. Okay. Nope. They just didn't want to give the ball back to Mahomes. And ultimately, good call. Good call. God, no, it's borderline insane, but it worked. It's crazy, but it worked. You punt that ball, and I don't punt. Like, as in, I play video games, I don't punt. if If I coach, I promise you one thing, we will not punt. So, that being said, you punt there. Because all they needed was what you just said. They were at the 50-yard line. All yeah, they, they need right is maybe 10, 15 yards in their field goal range for the game winner. Yep. So you punt that ball. But his nuts were down to his ankle. Yes. And he swung them. But anyway. here's the deal. Here's where I disagree with you. You are risking giving the ball back to Mahomes. Look what happened to the Niners. We mm-hmm. haven't touched on that game yet. All he had was 37 seconds, and they came back and won the game. Yeah, right? that, that's Mahomes. They, yeah, that's because they done fucked up. They had enough confidence that they were not going to give the ball back, uh, and it worked. That's all. Hey, that's no, all you can no, say. it's awesome that you know? it worked. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but uh, I wouldn't be getting comfortable doing that shit all the time. You got away with one, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I don't care if you have 37 seconds or not. That was that was bad defense. I I have to go back and look, but. The worst mistake anyone makes in the NFL, I am the anti against a prevent defense. So you're telling me I'm going to play a defense that allows you to march down the goddamn field and get within striking distance. That's the defensive call. You could have been playing if you could have been playing lights out up to that moment on defense. And then all of a sudden we're going to because Minnesota's done this shit, too. Yeah. Ben, don't I'm like, break. Hold on. you can't do that there. No, no, yeah. you play, you play, I'd rather lose playing sack up, up against them the same way we've been playing, get pinning your ears back, whatever you were playing, your defense scheme for the game. Yep. I'd rather lose that way than give up the yards that you're in either A, field goal range, if that's what you needed, or B, you're within striking distance of a touchdown, where it's not even a Hail Mary, you're literally at the 30, and now you're just winging 30 yards. So that, that was a defensive blunder, and... Since since we're on that game, let's talk about the Niners and Packers game real quick. Okay. The here's what I don't like about people, kind of in hindsight, they talking about the Niners and they're like, oh, they left too much time on the clock for Aaron Rodgers. You're not like at that point, you don't even know if you're going to score a touchdown, mm. and you do. You you take that. You don't try to hold back and like fucking kneel it at the one or something. You have to take that because you don't know if that score is coming. Right? Like you can't. I don't know. I think people get too hung up on that is my point. You know, 37 seconds, it's not a lot of time, and you're in the lead. That's where you want to be, but all these people talking about, well, they left too much time. What the fuck did you want them to do? Right. They did what they were supposed to do, and they scored a touchdown. It happened 
quick, but if you slow down, you lose momentum, right? I yeah, mean, and there's no guarantee that you get the touchdown from right there anyway. So, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I hate that take. I heard it way too much yesterday. Yep. I'm like, what the hell? What do you want him to do? I mean, leave too much time. They, yes, it looks like they left too much time because ultimately they lost the game, but that was that was defensive blunders. That and Devontae Adams bailed Aaron Rodgers out on one of those passes that was actually garbage where he had to wrap his body back around to catch a ball that was behind him. Oh, yeah, that it was they were like back shoulder. No, no. that was, yeah. <laughs> no, that's that's something no. that a quarterback coach brought up way it was at ten years ago so that they didn't sound fucking like they were a horrible fucking player, like he was inaccurate. Hey, back shoulder. Yeah, back shoulder my ass, dude. You right. just throw like dog shit. But yeah. saying this is behind him. He got bailed out on that one too. Not worried about this Packers team. I'm really not. And I, it, they're they're missing something. You get him as fired up as you want, because this is seems like it's gonna be a year where he's gonna take a, he's gonna take a shot and he's gonna go down anyway. So, ooh, all right, feels like it. Uh, so Rams Bucks quick. We are huge on Matthew Matthew Stafford. Stafford. I don't know who stops this team. Their defense is pretty damn good. And when you have a guy like this guy that can score you points at any point in the fucking game, and this isn't, you don't have to script it. With Jerry Goff, you had to script the game. It yeah. had to be perfect. The play call is what had to save him. Sean McVay actually gets to kick his feet up like maybe five, six, seven plays a game where he doesn't have to actually think about it. Yep. Yo, Matthew, hook it up, bro. Totally agree, man. In Cooper Cup, his him and Stafford are best friends, right? Oh yeah. Like they for sure eat breakfast every day together and like hold hands on the way to work. Like they are mm-hmm. such a good combination this year. Like yeah. damn, they look good. And to hold Mr. Tom Brady to no no one touchdown. He did get one, one at touchdown. Four hundred and thirty two yards on fifty five attempts. That's great. But I think he also led the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in rushing. Yes. Which is that's not Tom a Brady. Good thing. You don't want him leading your team in <laughs> rushing, bro. <laughs> Deshaun Jackson, three receptions, 120 yards in a TD. He had a little bit of swag, though, when he busted loose on him. Did you see him? He started doing his Philadelphia side, you know, running out to the side a little bit. And, yeah, good to see him. But he'll be, <clears> so that means I, next week he won't do anything. Like that's Oh, absolutely. Does, you know? I love the guys that are going to chase these points in fantasy and throw him, go pick him up, go throw him in their starting lineup. They see something that no one else sees. No. Uh, real players don't worry about that guy. Uh, that being said, Rams are going to be Rams are going to be damn tough to beat. Uh, we touched a little bit on already Cowboys Eagles. I did see a stupid ass segment on ESPN, and that was: <laughs> Does the NFC have to worry about the Cowboys? Yeah, uh, we talked about this a little bit ago offline, and no, no, you don't. Like, what you have to worry about is Dak. Dak does a great job correcting issues that the coaching staff presents or the team presents. Like there was a point uh, into the first half is the best example, two straight plays. First of all, they have him rolling to the left and they're inside the 10 yard line. He gets absolutely smoked because when you're rolling to the left, like it's really hard to throw the ball away when you're about to get hit. Yep. Couldn't do that. He had to take this monster hit the play after was supposed to be a run play, and there wasn't a running back in the backfield. Like, there's too much dysfunction. And obviously, we've talked about the play call issues and things the, like that. The clock issues, yeah. which he had again. Uh, Mike McCarthy, I don't know who was in his way this time. Right. I don't know if Casper kind of walked in front of the... I'm sure there was somebody. Something. Yeah, there's something Not because he didn't look. Yeah, it, but it... I No way I'm sold... Our little buddy over here would be arguing that their defense looked damn good, blah, 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 blah. No, Philadelphia looked that bad on offense. Your yep. defense is still the same. Nothing to worry about. You're going to need – I'm still not sold on – yeah, and I lost I lost in fantasy thanks to Zeke. Hey, appreciate you because – That's his one game for the year. Yeah, you're a piece of shit. You still didn't go over 100 yards. Tony Pollard still looked better running the rock. I still stick by that. I don't even care. I'm not even looking at the stats of this. If you watch this game – he looked way more explosive when he'd go through. Do you know that man's yeah. averaging like seven yards a carry? Yep. yep. He it's a different feel when he's back there. So I'm still sticking with that one. Yeah, yeah. Rio. It, you can't say your defense looked great. I, the Eagles scored more points against you than they did when they played the Falcons. Okay, I think they scored <laughs> 17 against the Falcons, something like that. It wasn't great, and they scored 21 against you. So let's 
Let's relax. There. Yeah, I, I we're already paraphrasing for him because we know yeah. we'd be here in that dumb shit. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. We'll beat you up even. But when you're Jimmer not here. Dak is the dark horse MVP, even though I didn't draft him in fantasy. But who did you take then? Huh? Lamar Jackson. So you didn't even take your MVP, your true MVP vote that you had. No player, you took Lamar Jackson. No, because excuse, excuse, excuse. Oh, excuse. Oh, did you wear a Dak Prescott jersey to the draft too? Yes, I did. Oh my god. Oh my! In this league that we play in, do they do it for? Do we do six points per passing touchdown? Yeah, but I don't. I don't want to combine. Too running many, back and too know, many, too many cowboys, and uh, do you that. can't do the running back and the quarterback, and then you trade Zeke. No, they. So, in all seriousness, the one thing, the thing that's going to save them is Dak making adjustments because the coaching is awful, and there's just there's a lot of dysfunction. So I'll give them some credit, but the NFC doesn't have anything to worry about with the Cowboys. No, that's the answer to that. That's a good, real good one. That was a good impression of Chris too. I hope he hears it so he can correct me. Maybe I can do better, but. No, you can't. You could he 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 could probably take what you just did and make himself better. I like it. Uh, real quick, some other like Saints over Pats. Nothing big to call out in that game. Um, they beat him up a little more than I expected. Falcons beat the Giants in a fucking barn burner of a game. Gross. Seventeen fourteen. Uh what else, man? That's that's pretty much everything. Broncos twenty six zero. So at the end of the day, it, and I don't have the exact stat in front of me. I brought this up uh, a couple episodes ago. It is extremely hard in the NFL to shut a team out. It doesn't matter how bad the team is. It is really hard for a team not to get one field goal up on the board. Yeah. That's happened twice now, back-to-back weeks. Yeah. And I don't know. The Jets are dysfunctional, but let's let's give a little love. Like I said, you're you're beating up on them Broncos. I created equal. Blah 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 blah. They're blah. they're a fine team. They're three and zero isn't real though. That's what I'm saying. They uh. So I think I th- I saw this somewhere. They're three and zero, and the teams they played are zero and nine. Okay. Partly so, because they played the Broncos. Hey, I'm not. First of all, I want to call out something real quick. Okay, you act like I'm a Bronco hater. <laughs> I'm saying their three and zero record isn't real. I am the one that said they're going to be better. With who, Jimmer? You did say with Teddy B. They're going to be better with Teddy B, and I'm I'm sticking by that. They're going to be fine. Um, I'm just saying the three and zero record is is not legit. I want to see him play some play some better teams and uh, win some close games. That's my point. Uh, do we already talk about Titans Colts twenty five sixteen? Uh yeah. AJ Brown is out too. Uh hamstring. I think he he had a something related to right around the knee. Which no. is not good. He looked like shit anyway. He hasn't looked great this year at all. So, yeah. So I think that was all of them. All righty. So let's cap the day off here with a little. It makes sense if you don't think about it, Jimmer. I'll give you some time to think, brother. So there's uh I don't know five seconds. That should be good enough, Jimmer. What do you got? All right. So. <clears throat> It's been it's been a few years ago now. It's getting end of the uh, end of the year review, <laughs> and that year they had accidentally let our reviews out. They got sent to our email before our actual review happened. Oh my god! Yeah, and it was not a great year for everybody. It was very pissy attitude throughout the play. It's uh, that's a that's a much longer story, but sitting there reading it and it's broken down like most places, you know, um your your intelligence of the job and your work ethic and blah 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 all the way down the line including attendance. So the scale was out of I think it was out of 4. So the highest score you can get per section is 4. Okay. I think you could get even a zero. So zero, uh, I guess if you get a zero, you get fired for anything. But whatever. Get to attendance. And this is before I go into it and I look at it. It says two. Two out of four. Now, a little context. Where I work, you get uh, 
three weeks of vacation and a week of personal time. So for, so 40 hours personal time. Five days. And that year I had not been late once. No one excused absences. None of that. I get a two. I also was... If I wasn't the top one, I was in the top three in overtime. I bet you I was averaging 20 hours of overtime every two weeks. So every pay period. Of course, I was awfully interested. They had my attention. How in the hell I could get a two out of four. Go in there, sit down. We get to, it's like number three on the list, right? So the other two were going by, blah, blah, blah. And, we get to that part, and I'm. He's like, "Well, two out of four here," and I'm like, "Uh," <laughs> and he put in the comments. Uh, he's like, "Good job here, blah blah,", blah. and I'm like, "Well, why?" In the, and that's where I stop him. I'm like, "Why? Well, why in the hell is it two out of four then?" Well, James, you used all your personal days. <laughs> oh my god! I'm like, excuse me. Yeah, you used all your personal days. So how can you? How could you get a four out of four? I'm like, well, first off, there's another number between two and four that maybe I wouldn't be as irritated if it was a three. Uh, he's like, well, what am I supposed to tell Joe? He didn't use a single personal day. I'm like, I don't know. Give him a fucking four too. I don't care what you do. That has nothing to do with it. Then I was like, I was, I was here. Like I said, first, second, or third throughout the whole year of overtime. So that means, I yes, I use my five personal days, which is a benefit. But I more than covered up for that, which it, that's not an unexcused absence, mind you. More than covered that up with over 20 hours of overtime every two weeks. Minimum. During a heavy fucking time. And... The guy that had not used any of his personal time was at the bottom of the totem pole when it came to overtime. We went back and forth on this. Eventually, he look, he looks at me. He's pissed. He's red in the face. I'm quite, you know, questioning him. And he's like, you've used your 15 minutes, a lot of time for this. You, you can go. Bye. Now, mind you, there were still five other sections we were supposed to make it through. We didn't get past three because the two out of four, because oh I my used my God. personal days, makes sense if, if you, you don't, don't think, think about, about it. it. Wow. So using the benefits they allow you, mm -hmm. it actually docks you. That they pound their chest on, you know, like best benefits in the around the area. And yeah, you get punished for using the damn thing. And. Yeah, I used, I don't even know if I used them all, though. I might have used like three or four. It don't matter. I used some days, and evidently, that takes you down two ticks. Jesus. <laughs> that definitely makes sense if you don't think about it. I'm Holy like, cow. I'm like well, what about, because our overtime was was not built during the week. Our overtime was built up. We were working weekends. So what I'm getting at is, hold on. So I took five days, but the other fucking... 48 weeks of the year that I was working fucking the I was working the weekend for one or two days or both the both days most times those don't cancel any of that out to at least get up to a three right you're worried about what you're going to tell someone else on their score because they didn't use personal time good god that is man you gotta love it <laughs> you definitely gotta love it well I tell you what we will be back on Thursday evening we should have little Rio back. Uh, rumor is he's uh, should be good to go. Then we'll see. We'll see if he comes out of his nest up there. Hopefully, hopefully we've got him back um, and we can get rolling again. We'll have some talk about the weekend uh, games, college football, NFL, things like that. But in the meantime, whiskey wagers. Oh, and we'll, paid up yeah, too. we'll have to pay up on these whiskey wagers too. Warm whiskey wagers. I've got two. Jim Rio is one. Rio owes one. So. We'll get those paid up. But in the meantime, yeah, give us a follow on the socials, Facebook, Insta, uh, TikTok, the old Twitter, 3 Gig Sports Podcast on everything. And, uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it. Give us some feedback. 
Whatever. Jimmer, anything else? Nope. Not at all. Beautiful. Well, guys, this is 3 Gig Sports. We We out. out.